Let's look closely at the IEP services page. We use this form when we're trying to describe the specially designed instruction that addresses the unique needs of the student. Special education and related services in this IEP must be based on research, which means that there's reliable evidence that the program or services are effective. IEP teams should have a strong evidence of the effectiveness of a program before proposing it in an IEP. Special education must be completed for all students. Needed or not needed must be checked for the other services on the form. Special education must be completed again for all students with the IEP, and it's defined as adapting the content, methodology, or delivery of instruction to address the unique needs of a student that result from their disability. The services provided must ensure that the children have access to the general education curriculum so that the standards can be met. It's important that we describe specifically in special education how we are adapting the content methodology or delivery. We want to be sure that that detailed description is in this service in particular. It's important to note also that for students whose disability area is speech or language impairment on their eligibility decision, that we want to enter speech and language services in the special education section for these students only. For other students, they would be considered a related service. Remember that accommodations alone do not constitute special education services. So again, make sure that the details really describe how the content methodology of delivery of instruction is addressed beyond just classroom accommodations. You can learn more about special education and related services by clicking this box here and learn how to describe the specially designed instruction for each student in each of the areas below. Special education and related services. The special education and related services in the IEP must be made based on peer review research, which means there is reliable evidence that the program or services are effective. The IEP team should have a strong evidence of effectiveness of instructional programs and other services before proposing them in the IEP. Peer review research also applies to non-academic areas such as behavioral interventions. Special education must be completed for all students with an IEP and is designed as adapting the content methodology or delivery of instruction to address the unique needs of the student that result from his or her disability. Services provided must ensure the student has access to the general curriculum so that the educational standards within the jurisdiction of the public agency, which apply to all children, can be, made, can be met. Please note, for students whose area of disability is speech or language impairment, as documented on the most current notice and eligibility regarding special education services, inner speech or language services in the special education services section. Accommodations alone do not constitute special education services. Special education services must be described in detail and in a manner that all team members understand. Specially designed instruction is what the IEP team has determined will assist the student in attaining those measurable goals. Please describe what the special design instruction is and how it addresses the unique needs of the student. Special education services, again, this focuses on that, that content, methodology, and delivery of instruction. We want to ensure that the student is learning those knowledge and skills he or she needs. We want to make sure that we're ensuring we're using the correct instructional strategies and approaches to teaching the content to the student. And also, you want to make sure um, the instruction is in a way that is, is, is provided for the particular student, what that delivery would look like for that student. Lastly, who provides special education and related services? Well, you need a qualified or certified registered person personnel will provide those special education and related services under IDEA. For each one, we want to put the anticipated frequency of services. And this is how often the services will be provided, whether that's annually, monthly, weekly, daily. 
and the amount of time should be documented. The amount of time is required for special education and related services only. If the location of service time or anticipated frequency of service is the same for more than one area, the amount of time could be written as a cumulative amount of time for those areas. Think about this, for some services like testing accommodations, it's difficult to determine the exact amount of time. So therefore those, those services itself should be self-explanatory. So when we say, when tested, the student has the test read aloud to him, then there's not a need to put a specific amount of time because it could vary. A specific amount of time is required when we're talking about special education and related services. It's important that all IEP teams understand what services will be provided and to ensure that those services are documented and implemented as the IEP team's understanding. We look at the beginning and ending dates. Beginning and ending or duration dates are the start to finish dates of the services, and they may be different for each area listed, and they may be different from the IEP implementation dates. The location of services is required and must list the specific location where the service will be provided, whether that's in regular education settings or in general education settings. The location is different for, could be different for each area listed, and it's very important that we list these correctly because the location of services is going to assist us in determining the appropriate LRE or least restrictive environment code. And then lastly, the service details are extremely important. Under special education in particular, we want to describe the specially designed instruction that's going to be provided for each area that's listed in the IEP. This is what the IEP team has determined is going to assist the student in attaining the goals and locations must be completed for each one of these services. You can learn about each of those types of special education services by watching a brief video. There's one for special education, one for related services, supplementary aids and services, a video for program modifications, accommodations that are needed for assessments, assistive technology, and support for personnel. Frequency, duration, and location of services. What are the requirements for amount of time for services provided? According to IDEA, each child's IEP must contain the projected date for the beginning of the services and modifications and the anticipated frequency, location, and duration of those services and modifications. For example, the number of times per week that a student receives special education speech language therapy should be based on the amount of time necessary to help make adequate progress, not on the number of days that a speech language pathologist or SLP is currently at the school. Okay, we want to make sure that those services are based on that particular student's needs. Additionally, please use caution when using terms like as needed when indicating um, information regarding frequency, duration, and location of services. Where are special education and related services provided? Well, according to IDEA, it expresses a preference rather than a mandate or placement in the general education classroom to the maximum extent appropriate for the student. So based on the student needs, we should first consider um, general education set into that maximum extent appropriate. And please remember that special education and related services are not a one size fit all. So what's appropriate for one student may not be particularly appropriate for a different student. When defining, when defining dates, frequency, location, and duration of services, inclusion in a general education setting must be considered first, okay, as the presumed placement of every student with a disability. So that goes back to that statement, to the maximum um, extent appropriate. We first look at that general education setting. Also, do not determine until all other IEP components have been determined on what that location would be for that particular student. You also want to clarify the level of resource, clarify the level of resource commitment depending on the location of those services for the particular related services. According to IDEA, 
Related services means transportation and such developmental, corrective, and other supportive services as are required to assist a child with a disability to benefit from special education. So again, it's those developmental, corrective, and supportive services that will help that student benefit from special education. Here are examples of related services. Um, these services could be provided by qualified social workers, psychologists, guidance counselors, or other qualified personnel. Um, services could also be provided by a licensed physician, um, a qualified occupational therapist. Um, we also look at the related services to include travel to and from school in and around school buildings. Uh, we're considering that specialized equipment, such as adaptive buses, lifts, and ramps. And also please remember that these services should include, these are services that are necessary for that student to benefit from special education. Please take note with related services do not include a medical device that is surgically implanted. The optimization of that device's function, e.g. mapping, maintenance of that device, or the replacement of that device. So, and also students can have more than one related services based on their particular need. Another note, students who receive special education, receive services under speech language impairment can receive academic services and students who are eligible in other categories can receive speech language services. So those students can receive those services. Here is an example um, of what those related services may look like in that student's IEP on that services page. It has the anticipated frequency of service, the amount of time, the beginning end date, duration dates, and the location of the service. And for that service detail, uh, it's very specific uh, what the um, service will be, will be provided by the occupational therapist. Supplementary aids and services. Supplementary aids and services enables the student with a disability to be educated with non-disabled students to the maximum extent appropriate in their least restrictive environment. When accommodations are made for the student with disabilities, the content standards are the same and the student can earn course credit if those Classes require the student to earn those course credits. Examples of supplementary aids and services. You have um, provide the student with a, a copy of the notes. They can have information read aloud. They can get extended time if needed. Um, classroom companion or peer helper plan or preferential seating. They can have information scribed or dictated for them. Um, just remember that this section should not include accommodations for classroom, district-wide, or state assessments. The IEP team might consider and discuss the following to help identify effective accommodations. Definitely want to look at the student's present level of academic achievement and functional performance. You want to um, assess how those accommodations will be evaluated to determine the effective, effectiveness. The modality that works best for the student, how does that student learn best? What's that student's um, preference as far as learning with their learning style? Uh, those specific learning goals should also be considered um, in the student's individual strengths and needs. Additionally, you're looking at where the this will take place. Would it be in a regular education setting or other education related setting? What about that student's participation in those extracurricular and, and non-academic settings? So all these things should be um, taken into consideration when we're looking at enabling children with disabilities to be able to be educated with their non-disabled peers. When we look at those um, supplementary aids and services, this is a screenshot of uh, the services page and it provides an example of what it should look, look like in that student's IEP. It has the anticipated and frequency of that service. It also has the duration dates and the location of the service for the student. 
Um, it also provides specific service details as it relates to those supplementary aids and services that that student will receive in a general education setting. Program modifications. Although IDEA does not define program modifications and support for school personnel, according to IDEA, each child's IEP must contain a statement of the program modifications or supports for school personnel that will be provided to enable the child to advance appropriately towards attaining the annual goals, to be involved in and make progress in the general education curriculum as well as to participate in extracurricular and non-academic activities, to be educated and participate with other children with disabilities and non-disabled children in the activities I just listed. Modifications versus accommodations. When course content is modified, the student is not pursuing the content prescribed in the applicable course of study and cannot earn course credit. So modifications change what a student is taught or expected to learn and accommodations change how a student learns the material. When determining if, the, if, if, it, if it's a program modification or um, accommodation, you should consider these questions. Are modifications to the physical classroom environment necessary to promote progress in the general education curriculum, access to peers with and, with and without disabilities, and progress toward IEP goals? Also, you should ask, are modifications to the school schedule or program necessary to promote progress in the general education curriculum? access to peers with and without disabilities and progress toward the IEP goals. Accommodations needed for assessments. The accommodations needed for assessments should be completed for all students taking classroom and district-wide assessments. Testing accommodations change how students are tested, but does not change what a test measures. Here is an example of accommodations for assessments and the student's IEP on the services page. If you will note, it has the anticipated frequency of services, the duration dates, the location of services, and the services detail. You wanna record all accommodation, accommodations the student needs for assessments, regardless of whether the accommodations are allowed on state assessments. Accommodations should correlate to what is listed on state and district-wide assessment forms. And it also should be provided on an ongoing basis for classroom assessments that the student takes throughout the school year. Assistive technology. Assistive technology, or commonly referred to as AT, includes any device slash service needed that is used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of a child with a disability. Note, do not list specific names of devices, but list their function instead. So that gives you an example of using a voice output device opposed to naming a specific name. Here are examples of assistive technology. Um, you have pencil grip, screen magnifier, standard, adaptive furniture, switches, talking calculators, electronic books, word processors. All of these are examples of assist, assistive technology and whether or not they're included in the services page will um, be based on that particular student's needs. Here's an example of assistive technology listed on the services page. You have your frequency um, of services, your duration dates, and the location of the services, and also in the service detail is very specific about what um, assistive technology uh, would be utilized for that particular student. Support for personnel. Support for personnel includes any training or support provided to staff specific to the needs of the student. Examples include training on a device, diagnosis, instructional technique, behavior intervention plan, 
individual health care plan, seclusion restraint, etc. Here's an example um, of support for personnel in the student's IEP on the services page. You'll note it has the anticipated frequency of services, the duration dates, and the location of services. And also in the service detail, it provides specific um, information regarding the services to be provided by the speech language pathologist on the text-to-speech and speech software. 